all time this is, Woodsy, because you just do not know how to play this game, Mark. No, it's one of the hardest equations facing a driver and his team when you've got variable weather conditions. Half dry, half wet, sometimes it's pouring, sometimes it's dry. And you're constantly chasing setup on the car. And the guys who can continue to dial their car in so it's making maximum use of its tyres, it's going to be very strong here today. Going to be an iron car 34 there. Garth Tander at the wheel by the looks of things. Some 209 points adrift. A series leader Mark Scape in the Shell Championship. Yeah, we've got a thriller, haven't we? We've got a race within a race today. There's plenty of people out there who want to win Bathurst. There's no doubt about that. But there's also two guys here dueling for the Shell Championship Series. Keep in mind, this is the final round of this championship, which has rained all year long. And it's been between two men, Mark Scape, 23-year-old Garth Tander. Tander had a shocking run at the GMC 400 in Canberra. That was a round where he scored not a single point. And that really allowed Scape to build up a buffer on him, but he's still hanging on by his fingernails. Anything could happen here today. Look at the view out of the windscreen there of the Valvoline Cummins Commodore as he made his way along pit straight. You can see some ominous clouds in the distance and they're heading towards the mountain. We're under three hours before the start of the FAI 1000. In fact, it's Barks who's at the wheel of that car at the moment. Teammate to Garth Tander. Barguana, so hungry for success here. It's a dynamite driver combination. The big guy and the little guy, they call them. Quite a difference in height, but their driving abilities are very well matched in endurance trip. Barguana has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders this day. And these guys have a pretty simple assignment today. They've got to go out and win the race. Exactly right. It's all they're interested in doing. For Tanner, it hasn't been a great run in terms of the FAI 1000s in recent years. Has yet to finish one. Today, he'd love nothing more than to walk away with the win. And Barguana is exactly the same. I don't think I can recall Bargs being as, as happy with life as he is at the moment. Announced recently that he's getting married to his girlfriend Deb that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks time and just really enjoying his V8 supercar driving there's a lot of work for Holden some drive days and corporate assignments for the mark yeah he's a very busy boy and uh, we're looking for a big result here it's one of the big Kev Commodores driven by Owen Kelly Aaron McGill and just the strength these top 20 cars is phenomenal, isn't it? We say it every year, but every year, these top guns, the guys in with a genuine chance of victory here, just seem to grow and grow. There's so many good cars out there now. Potential winners, Baz. I was just uh, laughing when I was watching, listening to you talking about bar, because I bet uh, every uh, every lap when he comes into the, into the elbow, he remembers what he did in the warm-up oh. three years ago. <laughs> it has to, had, you know, as a racer, it has to, it has to uh, stay there, you know, you can imagine he comes down and think, well, yeah, nice and gently round here, you know. You remember how devastated he was. Quite sure that'd be uh, top of his mind as he was strapping on the belts to head out for this morning's warm-up session. It's like, just take it easy. It's the final check of all the gear. On board with Mark Scaife in the mobile Commodore number one. And this man is number one in the Shell Championship Series in 2000. He only has to finish 17th or better to claim the Shell Championship Series crown. And certainly, talk to Mark in the weeks leading up to this race, and certainly this weekend, the Shell Championship Series is top priority. He's quite prepared to forfeit victory in the FAI 1000 to claim that Shell crown. So there's going to be a lot of tactics to unfold here. They will certainly be watching that car 34. And depending on where Tander and Barguana are and how they're going, that will determine very much the Holden Racing Team strategy today. Having said that, I guess they would love nothing more than to walk away with a victory at Bathurst. It's been four years since the Holden Racing Team has stood on top of the podium last year. They finished second and third, respectively. Lowndes and McConville second. Paul Morris and this man, Mark Skay, finished third. But it's been an incredible year for this team in terms of the sprint rounds in the Shell Championship Series. They have just been so dominant and so sharp. And even in endurance trim as well. Their performance at the recent Queensland 500 where both Lowndes and Scaife swept all before them. Mark, of course, took victory at the Adelaide 500, won the Sunday race and in doing so claimed that round. And his teammate Lowndes, well, he won the Saturday leg at the Adelaide 500. So 
Perhaps this could be their weekend to get back to the top of the podium at Bathurst. The odds are pretty short on these guys. You cannot get good money on these blokes. Jason Bright and Paul Radisich. Dynamite combo. These guys have been pretty much on the top of the favourites list the last few weeks. Certainly with the bookies. And they've been pretty strong throughout the week. Dick Johnson Racing Cars. Very strong here last year. They haven't had much of a Shell Championship Series season. But they've really come on strong toward the end of the year. And they're looking very, very strong here at Mount Panorama. Paul Radisich at the wheel. Team working very, very hard to get this new car only built recently, only debuted recently into optimum trim for this attack this weekend. And the car sounds beautiful, it sounds strong, forming faultlessly throughout the week. Grant's a very fast driving combination too. Grant Denyer. Well, the strength of the uh, the Dick Johnson Racing team, of course, is, uh, is well supported and well backed by everybody here. Are you confident this morning that your cars have uh, what it takes to do the job today? Well, I think the cars are very well prepared, and I believe that they're uh, well and truly good enough to win the race. And reliability has not been a problem. You know, we've had a very good run-up at this point over the weekend, and uh, I'm just looking forward to a nice, dry, it'd be lovely if it was dry, but it certainly is not looking that way at this point in time. All those horrible memories of uh, pulling out 20 laps from home last year are gone, and you're ready to turn it around? Well, you know, I've been in these situations before, and, um, it's a funny place, you know, Bathurst, it, it can turn on the best weather and can turn on the worst. And, and I think this is the worst I've ever seen in the whole 30 years that I've been coming here. Well, good luck here today. Over to you, Barry. Yeah, Larry, what's the matter? Oh, we've got an engine problem. What kind of engine? It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh damage a uh, push rod. Oh, boy. So what, what, what can you what? do? Uh, push rod is, uh, the ends fell off it or something and it's uh, gone on the seven cylinders. So what can you do about that? Well, we can either change the engine or work out why that's happened and change the push rod. And what about the bit that's come off it? Oh, that won't be a problem. Uh, I, I, I haven't got it all out yet, so it's only a very basic guess at the moment. Best of luck, anyway. Well, tense time down in the <laughs> Castrol pit. Boy, oh boy, is what a time for something like that to happen. I was going to say, is that going to be one of these weird weekends where you get Perkins Engineering renowned for its reliability and they're having problems? We we'll take, take a break. break. We're back at Bathurst where black clouds are looming, so it looks almost certain as though we'll have rain to make this track even wetter very shortly and there is another great story craig and mark crompton and seaton about to part company this is the last time they'll drive together cromley doesn't have a drive for next year after he leaves for tickford racing neither has one at bathurst this is glenn's 17th attempt yep yeah, it's been a long partnership really when you think that uh, crompton first linked up with seaton back in 1998 did the old race and he's on a ford credit colors this is the team car which has been so impressive throughout qualifying driven by Wayne Gardner and Neil Bates putting the car on pole position I didn't think anyone would have expected that Rusty no, it was quite a surprise indeed judging the conditions to perfection yesterday and Gardner putting putting in an absolutely ripper lap two minute 29 Talking about 2.29, just two and a half hours to go before our race start. Let's have a look at the Shell Helix replay. And it looks like uh, Rod Salmon or Damian White having a moment down at the chase. Gee, a lot of cars got caught out there yesterday. Yeah, when the rain comes down, that section of track where they're coming through the chase, braking hard, they've got about 200 metres. Slow the car from about 270, 280 kilometres an hour to try and take that very tight left-hander was catching a lot of guys out yesterday. There must be a big pool of water down there. If you look closely, you can just see on the back wing of the Mitre 10 forward there, those vapor trails. Just look on the outside edge of the wing. There's the trail of mist there that shows how much humidity there is in the air. When those wings are starting to slice through the air at that velocity, you actually start to see the way the airflow is behaving. As awful as the weather conditions are at times, like that, that, that actually does look quite spectacular really does. I mean, you can see it there, the outside edge of the wing on the Falcon particularly, the most effective part of the wing. 
generating a lot of downforce. I'm in the region of 200, 200 kilograms, I should say, of downforce at 200 k. So they really do play a big factor in holding these cars down on the ground at such high speed. This is a team that could surprise today. Gee, it's been a, an up and down season for Mark Larkham. A heavy crash at Oran Park. He bounced back with a brand new car and took his first ever race win in the Shell Championship Series at Calder. And is teaming up with a vastly experienced Alain Menu here, the 1997 British Touring Car Champion. And another team that you might consider to be dark horses as well. The super cheap Auto Falcon. And boy, oh boy, wasn't Stephen Ellery quick in that car? at the Sandown round of the championship. Teaming up this weekend with multiple Gold Star champion Paul Stokel. Baz? Yeah, I'm just standing down there watching Sean working on uh, Larry Perkins' car. Now, Larry's back in the car now. They've uh, they just put in the Rockerbox cover back on. They've put a new push rod in it. But the problem is, you see, when you, when you have a push rod problem, what it can do, where the piece comes off, it can push the valve down a bit far and the valves can touch you or the valves can touch the piston. And they're not going to know that until they fire the thing up. So uh, it's all a, bit, uh, all a bit iffy. And as Larry says, he doesn't know why the push rod broke. Maybe it must have been just, it could have been just a bad bit of bad luck with a push rod but they it was a new motor they put in yesterday afternoon you know to run as their race motor so um you know it's, uh, it's a good job it went now rather than on the first lap of the race exactly that's a worrying thing though yeah. isn't it Baz? because oh. i've seen so many times in races where components which have normally been so reliable have failed and they've been able to trace it through to a, a bad batch from the manufacturer this is the problem you see and yeah. uh, i'm just waiting to hear when they fire it up because you'll be able to hear straight away whether the when it came in uh, you could hear that it was missing on one cylinder so it's not uh, it's not going to be far away now before larry gets the word to uh, to fire it up when you spoke. I'd, say, I'd say any second now right here we go let's have a listen Sheen? Yeah, I would say it sounded um, pretty good. Let's have a... What it sounded all right, Sean, didn't it? Yeah, it's... Um, don't know why. It's all brand new valve train. Well, yeah, you can never tell. And this car, this team, legendary for reliability. Perkins Engineering built a number of customer cars. Have done that over the years. And certainly this car, its strength and endurance trim has been its virtual bulletproof reliability. And all of a sudden, get something like that happening in the engine and in this crucial final warm-up session before the 1000 kilometer race starts that's a very worrying moment for this team well, you're quite right and i think what was interesting was when barry was talking to larry there he seemed quite perplexed larry was short on words he just really didn't know what the cause of the problem was well it's just that his engineering processes are so sound rusty he's been doing it year after year after year they have these systems of life and components and making sure that their engine, their gearbox, their drivetrain, transmission, everything is brand new when it goes into the car for this race. And when you have a failure like that, it's very worrying. So hopefully things are okay. It might have just been one bad push rod in the batch. Vital engine component. And uh, let's hope they don't have any more problems with that engine. Larry Perkins and Russell Ingall, certainly one of the favorites for Mount Panorama this weekend. The session, the one session is coming to an end. There's Larry. Check it flags out. So the official warm-up session has been completed for this tremendous race, the FAI 1000. Let's check out the full starting grid on the Helix grid sheet. Gardner and Bates, outstanding performance in very difficult conditions yesterday by Wayne Gardner to put the FTR Falcon up hole in his first drive for Ford. Johnson and McLean will start alongside them. Ingle and Perkins, Tander and Barguana further back. Last year's winners, Richards and Murphy alongside Ellery and Stogel. Bow and Richards, Donahue and Mecklem, Wheel and Crick. Then it's Faulkner. This is a huge field. Trap, Jones, Morris and Neil. Plato and Muller, the second of the Holden Racing Team Commodores in there too. Dougal and Medecki, Bates and Peters further back. White and Owen. Then it's Canto and Moncrief on row 16. McLeod and Wakefield. Larry is slowing on the circuit. That's got to be a concern. Yeah, look behind the scoreboard there. You can see the Castro car going very, very slowly. Hopefully not a continuation of an engine problem but i hate to say i suspect it is now the factor here too is that we believe rain is falling around the rest of the circuit so we are hotting up the fai 1000 with rain starting to fall anything can happen stay with us here at mount panorama
We're back at Bathurst. Two hours and 20 minutes to race start, and Larry Perkins is headed to get a new engine installed. And that is, of course, a very dangerous situation for him. As we look ahead to...